Welcome to Philosophy and Critical Thinking. In this video, I'm going to be making an argument that video games are a great way to get kids into philosophy. In philosophy, we'll make arguments by also using thought experiments. Thought experiments are roughly imagined situations that we use to support an argument we want to make. So in general, thought experiments are pretty much stories. We'll create a story, an imagined story, and see what we can conclude from that story. Um, in video games, the time of when it was like Pac-Man or um, Space Invaders, where there was no story behind it, you just went in and played your game and had, got your entertainment and walked away, that's been gone for a very, very long time. That's ancient history. Most games, will back themselves up with a very deep and compelling and interesting story. They're always going to have a very strong story. And ever since video games have been able to be saved, where you didn't have to start from the beginning every time you turned on the machine, video game de developers have made uh, stories very long. So with the stories being very long, somewhere anywhere between 20 to 40 hours, and in some games even longer, this has allowed them to have characters that are really strongly developed where the player gets to really get involved with the um, character and relate to them much better. And also deep stories with a lot of content so you don't have to uh, go roughly over detail. The details can go step by step. You can develop it really strongly. So this is where video games have evolved to be quite compelling stories, just like you would expect from movies and TV shows. Now, someone might want to object that there's no real difference between video games and other forms of media in doing this, because there's plenty of TV shows and movies that do use concepts in philosophy and thought experiments in their storytelling, such as the movie The Matrix, the Matrix borrows from old philosophy thought experiments regarding um, our ability to know the external world um, by just relying on our senses. Like, well, our senses could tell us that we're viewing the world as it is, but we're actually not. And those kinds of things. But the one extra element you can have here with an advantage the games have over film and TV is since video games have been allowed to be saved, so to be able to be saved is you can stop and hold the story and continue on, video game developers want to make their game more attractive to buy by stretching it out as much as possible. They want to kind of maximise the content, so people want to be able to have a long-term gameplay. So if they want the long-term gameplay, it creates longer stories. It's like in a video game scenario, no one's too worried of have a 20, 30 or 40 hour long story because they're interacting with the story and then they can save it and get back to it when they can. In films, however, because you, you want to try and get it all done in one sitting, uh, you know, the longest you'll probably see in most films is three hours and, and, and sometimes depending on the kind of movie it is, that's even that's pushing it. So this is one advantage games has over the film and TV because they can really stretch out those stories and you can get that extra character development that goes along, along with that. Also, uh, there's interaction from the player with the story. You're not just sitting as an outside observer just enjoying the film or the TV show. What you're doing is actually you actually have to do something to let the story continue. You have to participate and play and succeed in the tasks, whatever the game is, to get to that point. So there's an extra sense of involvement in what goes on in the story, that you have played a role in what's going on in this story here. So this, when it comes to the point of thought experiments, you'll feel the uh, consequences of what goes on in those stories. Uh, this has been pointed out by um, philosopher Marcus uh, Schultz in 2014 in his article, Simulating Philosophy, 
interpreting video games as executable thought experiments, which I'll attach in the description if you want to go into more details about that. Some people who haven't played a lot of video games might have an idea of saying, well, how deep are these stories really? I mean, like, is it all just about a uh, knight going off to capture a dragon, that kind of thing? Like, even though stories might go on for a little while, that there's nothing of um, real substance in the stories behind most video games. What I'll, um, I'm going to show on you in the next slide is a part from a video game called Final Fantasy X. And there's going to be three philosophical to uh, topics here that are just in one scene. And this is these concepts are drawn along and investigated very deeply in this particular video game. But the three topics are critical thinking, faith versus reason, and tolerance. So take a look at this video slide now. Because I'm all bad, and that was my brother. You knew? Mm. Hmm. Why didn't you tell me? We knew you'd be upset. This is great. I can't believe I've been traveling with an Albed, a heathen. You're wrong. We have nothing against Yevon. But you Albed used the forbidden machina. You know what that means? Sin was born because people use machina. You got proof? Show me proof. It's in Yevon's teaching. Oh, not that you know. That's not good enough. Yevon says this. Yevon says that. Can't you think for yourself? Well, then you tell me. Where did sin come from, huh? I... I don't know. <laughs> you badmouth Yevon, and that's all you can come up with. But... That doesn't mean you should do whatever they say without thinking. Nothing will ever change that way. Nothing has to change. You want Sin to keep coming back? There might be a way to stop it, you know? Sin will be gone once we atone for our past mistakes. When? How? If we keep faith in Yevon's teachings, it will be gone one day. Why do I even bother? The way video game developers have made their games more attractive to purchase is by making games where you can have alternative endings where depending on the way you play the game will have an effect on how the video game ends so you're going to have uh, a different outcome on the game based on what you did so in this area this opens up a great area in philosophy called consequentialism which is a moral theory about trying to do the things that produce the best consequences and also another part which is common in thought experiments is the idea of possible worlds. Now, in this is why thought experiments can be sometimes very useful, is that in the real world when we do something, it's hard to really kind of think about what would it be like if I did this or what would it be like if I'd done this instead of that. And what the video games do is creates the story, but then will have different outcomes at the end of the story to show you how um, things would have been if you created these uh, different actions. So it's entertaining for the consumers because they get to try different things out and replay the story as opposed to just watching the same thing over and over again, but also opens up the idea of um, different outcomes from different actions. I'm going to provide for you an example of this to give you the idea. This video game is called Abe's Odyssey. In this game, you play as a alien that's a slave that escapes this factory that he was a slave at. And the goal of the game is to rescue his friends from the factory and then to ultimately destroy the factory. Now, during the game, you have the opportunity to save uh, your friends or to just leave them there and not bother rescuing them. And as you play the game, you ultimately get to the point where you'll destroy the factory. However, at the end of the game, you do destroy the factory, but you get caught by the slave owner. And so I'm going to show you now the outcome of the ending if you destroyed the factory, but during the game, you didn't save any of your friends or not many of them. Did you see him? Uh, he didn't do much, but Abe, he's one of us. He didn't do any good. 
Who shot us? Well, what do you think? It was a schmuck. Well, how about you? I don't get it. Now, boss. No, guys, no, no. No. Ah. Let him. So, as we can see, that didn't turn out very good for Abe. Now, let's see what happens if he destroys the factory at the end of the game and saves his friends, or lots of them. Similar to the reasons why video game developers will attempt to create alternative endings to games, they'll also create alternative journeys. Um, some are quite uh, still linear, like there'll still be a linear journey, but you might have certain decisions you can make on the way. And some are quite expansive. Um, for instance, there's a term in certain gaming called an open world game, where there's lots of different options and, and different decisions you can make. There's nothing straightforward about the journey. And then, but even so, with all the different journeys you can do, it may very well end up the same ending. Like some games will have a different ending in the open world games, but then some games will have an open world game, but then it'll end up at the same ending. But the idea here is where you can show that even though the consequences might turn out in a particular way, there's different ways of getting there. So this is a good one where you can get an idea in philosophy that you can have different arguments or different approaches to um, the same outcome. And some people argue that, okay, certain situations might produce an outcome, but there's different ways of getting there and this way is a better way than the other way. So this is a way uh, you can have a philosophical concept of the alternative journey. Um, so this has um, uh, more options typically in video games, like with the Abe's Odyssey one, the options are pretty much uh, a uh, dichotomy. You can either save the friends or not. Whereas in the alternative journey approach with video games is that you will typically have lots and lots and lots of different decisions um, where you'll be caught in dilemmas or with different choices um, throughout the entire game. An example of this is a video game, an older video game called Splinter Cell Double Agent. Now in this one, your character is a undercover agent for the NSA. And in this part of the game, you have to befriend a prisoner. You've been planted by the NSA to be as a prisoner in a jail. And the dilemma comes up where the NSA agent has um, need to befriend the prisoner, but the prisoner has an enemy in the prison who he wants him to kill. So he's on the dilemma of whether to kill the prisoner's enemy so that way he's befriended the prisoner and is getting deep into the other undercover or to um not kill the prisoner and you know keep in good in good with the NSA because obviously the NSA wouldn't want him committing those kind of serious crimes whilst he's undercover. Put your hands against it now. You just made a big mistake. They're gonna have to hose you off the concrete when I get through with you. Well, now that I've got him, what do I do with him? Jamie hates this guy. If I kill him, I'm Jamie's best buddy for life, which is good for the mission. But Lambert doesn't want casualties. He's got Williams breathing down his neck. One or the other. Gotta decide. Now, clearly with that kind of video game, that's for a bit of an older audience for young adults or um, uh, teenagers, that, that, that kind of age level. So, like, obviously, um, that's not a game you'd be expecting many kids. Wait a minute. We're thinking about this all wrong. 
The point of the building competition isn't just to build something. We have to do something to get noticed by the judges. Okay then, so how do we do this? We don't just build something functional, we build something fun. After we finish the fireworks machine like we planned, then we build something cool on top of it. We might be onto something. If we want to get a reaction out of the judges, you build something scary. So I say we build a creeper. Wouldn't an Enderman be better? I'm more scared of Endermen than Creepers. They both have their moments. They're both pretty scary. Then again, you scared the crap out of us with a Creeper today. All right, let's build the Creeper. You're going with Axel's idea? What's wrong with my idea? Nothing. So the advantages that video games have over other forms of media for both children and adults is that the they can act as thought experiments in a way that other forms of media such as tv movies and even books is that it gets you involved into the thought experiment and it also allows you to explore your decisions and see what kind of consequences your decisions can be make and you get to do what we can't do in any form of other media or in the even in the real world is we can't go backwards and try again and see what other outcomes we can produce. As we can so go through the video game and say, I'm going to make these decisions and see what happens. And then after the game's over, I go back and say, okay, I'm going to try these decisions and see what happens. So this is um, in a very real way, gets to test out the um, philosopher's toolkit of exploring possible worlds. And also, because we're involved in such a way, um, we will feel more directly the consequences of those decisions as opposed to someone just telling me all of these possible worlds and saying, oh, in this world, this will happen, in that world, that will happen. Because I've been guiding the decision, I'm going to feel those consequences more directly than being an outside observer. If you would like to see more articles and videos regarding a variety of topics from a philosopher's perspective, you can go onto the website www.philosophycriticalthinking.com. Uh, on that website, there's a comment section. If you um, want to put in the comment section any of your uh, any ideas of um, of uh, different topics, uh, and that can be newspaper articles, YouTube videos. Um, TV shows, um, uh, debates, some debates on TV, some podcasts, any kind of media, and you'd like a philosopher's perspective on it, put it in the comments section, um, either on this YouTube channel or, in, or on the blog, and I'll post a response when I can, and I'll let you know when I've posted it. If you want to stay in tune for more of these uh, videos and blog, and blog posts, please subscribe and click the bell. Thanks.